Hey there guys, hello and welcome to another Divi tutorial brought to you by the team at Divi Engine. My name is Roby and today I'm going to be showing you how you can slide pretty much anything on your Divi site by utilizing a lightweight JavaScript library called Slick.js. Slick.js is awesome because it's fully responsive and has a ton of features to help you customize the appearance of your slider. Now there are different ways to achieve this, there are various third party plugins out there, but this is a lightweight solution that requires very little code and keeps your website nice and speedy. Okay guys, so one of the first things is that we do make a few assumptions here. You should be comfortable utilizing an FTP client to FTP into your WordPress to be install and that you're able to upload additional files up into your child theme. Now, if you're not using a child theme, definitely check out the links below in the description of this video or in the blog post at DiviEngine.com forward slash resources. There you'll find a bunch of other tutorials that we've done in the past, but also within the specific article, you'll find the links that we're talking about here. Now, without further ado, let's get going. And the first step here is to go to the Slick.js site and download the zip package. So all you do once you're there is you go to get it now on the right hand side here, and then you click on download now. Now, once you have that download popping up, Make sure that you save this in a spot that's easy to find for the next step where we'll be uploading the files into your Divi WordPress install. Okay, now I've got my file downloaded here and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to extract the files. You do that just by using your favorite zip client and unzip the files. And then you get to go into that folder and the one we're interested in is this slick folder right here. Now using your favorite FTP client, you're going to have to FTP into the file system of your Divi WordPress install. Now I'm using a local server, so I'm just going to be copying mine over like this. And here's my WordPress root install. And then when, once you're FTP'd into your site, you just go to WP content. You go to themes. You go to your child theme. And you just paste or upload the files into the root of your child theme. Okay, so now that we've got the Slick.js files uploaded into the root folder of our child theme, it's time to integrate that into our Divi site. Now to do that, we have to go to Divi, Theme Options, and then we'll head over to the Integration tab. Now we have to add some code here to this head area of our blog. So to get that code, let's go back to the blog post where you'll find this video. Okay, so here on the page on the Divi Engine site for this tutorial, when you scroll down a bit, you'll see you're in step two, integrating Slick.js into your Divi WordPress install. We have to copy this code here, and we'll do it so. And just a quick explanation here, we're just looking at the CSS for Slick.js itself. Then there's a default theme. Now you can go ahead and customize the theme to get different looks and colors and effects and all different fun stuff. And then on the bottom is the actual JavaScript that makes this magic happen. Now you'll notice here that we've got your child theme folder. Now this is just gonna be the folder where you uploaded the slick folder to. And you need to replace my text here, with everything with the brackets here, with your folder. So when I go back to the back end, I'll show you how I do that. Okay, back on the back end, I'm gonna go ahead and paste that code. Now I need to designate the correct folder. And if you recall, my theme name, or my child theme was Divi, oops, Divi Engine, the dash child theme. And I'll just go ahead and select that text, just so I don't have to do this three times. I will just again select this. Paste it over. Oops. There we go. That looks good. So I'll save that. And that's it for the integration for now. Let's see if issues come up. Hopefully not. Fingers crossed. Now we're getting into the exciting stuff. We have to build our first slider. Now you can build a slider right on a page that you've already created with other content on it. But for this example, and just to highlight the features and the things you can do, I'm gonna be creating a new page to show you how we do this. So I'm gonna to go to Pages, Add New, and then I'll just give it a silly name, like slide.js example. 
just to keep it simple, but it doesn't really matter what you call it. Now we'll enable the Divi Builder. We'll say build from scratch. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is add one column row. And now this is where it gets interesting. And let's go to the Visual Builder for this. Now we can add the various elements that we want to slide through. So everything that you add here is something that's gonna be slid through within that carousel slider. So just for example's sake, I'll be adding a blurb. We don't really need to make any changes for right now, but maybe just so that we can see what's happening. I'll say your title goes here one. I'll just be lazy and I'll just duplicate this blurb. Let's say two. And we're gonna do this five times just to get some stuff in there that we can slide through. And I'm just adding the numbers so that you know we can visually see that it, oh wow, it is actually working. Or, man, I would think this goes faster, but it does not. Five. There we go. Okay, so now we've got these five elements in here. And let's go ahead and publish this page. Okay, cool. Now we've got that in there. And time to actually add the initialization and create that class that we're going to be assigning to pull it all together and create the slider. Okay, so to actually create the slider, we do need to add some more code on the page. And this is really the only code you'll be adding on page. Okay, so now to start pulling things together, we need to add a code module with a little bit of JavaScript code in there that's going to pull it all together and create that slider for us. So let's go ahead and add a section. And it can just be a one column and add a code module. Now the code for this, we can also find on the actual blog post. So let's head over there really quick. Okay, here we'll just scroll down a little bit more on the page and we'll select all the code in step four. And when back on the actual page, we will go ahead and paste that code between two script tags since we're using jQuery yeah? and paste that code in. Now you'll see here that we created the class slide stuff. And that's the one that we'll use to go look for those different modules that we want to be sliding through. You'll see a bunch of comments in here. And the first thing you'll note here is that we're putting it on an infinite loop so that it keeps sliding even when it gets to the end. And the number of slides we'll show is three and we'll scroll one slide each time the slide button's clicked. So let's go ahead and just commit those changes. I'm just going to enter a year into the Visual Boulder real quick and go ahead and save the page. Now, I didn't need to go into the Visual Boulder there. I actually wanted to do the step I was going to do there in the next phase here. So just let's take a look at what this looks like on the front end right now, and then we'll make some quick small changes. Okay, so you're on the front end. You can see that, you know, you don't have a slider yet, but we can see we're going through, you know, the one, two, three, four and five blurbs that we added to the page. Now we need to do a couple small changes to quickly make this work. So let's go back to the back end. Okay, back on the back end, the first thing I just want to do, and this is why I'm going to enter the visual builder. There are some controls on the slider. So just for this example, and without getting into you know a whole CSS lesson and styling different elements on the page, I'm just going to put a blue background here just so that we can highlight the, the controls of the actual slider. Now that you can change any color, you don't have to change the color if you don't want to, it just simplifies things a little. And then just because I did that, I'm quickly going to just make the text for the title white. And I will extend those styles to all the blurbs in this section. And you'll see the other ones change. And then also what we want to do is we want to change the text to light so that it actually shows. And again, we're going to extend the styles to all the blurbs in this section, extend, and there you can see they changed. Okay, so now the actual functional portion we need to do. We created that selector, that CSS class slide dash stuff. 
we need to add this to the parent element for all these different blurbs that we have here. Now these could be blurbs, images, maps, again, whatever your heart desires can go in there. But for this example, we kept it simple. So let's go into the row settings. And then we don't want to actually target the row, but we actually want to target the column within which all these elements live. And we'll head to the advanced tab, CSS ID and classes, and then we'll add this slide dash stuff class over there. Save, save, and then we'll save that. And we will go and check out the front end. Okay, now fingers crossed, let's refresh this. And here we go. We see our slider and we're sliding through. One, two, three, four, five. And it looks great, but there's a little bit of a spacing issue here. So that is easily fixable if we go back to the back end really quick. But as you can see, we have our three slides and they slide one by one. Isn't that awesome? And we did that with just a few lines of small code. And there's a lot of different things and layouts that we can do, but I'll take you over to the Slick.js site again in a second to default, no, sorry, default, to show you some of those examples. Okay. Okay, so just to go ahead and create a little bit more spacing between these different slides, just go and select the module. You go into the design settings. You go to spacing. Now you can add a little bit of left and right padding. Let's just do 25 pixels. We'll link them up and then what we'll do is extend it again because we're being lazy right now but it's also a really cool feature of Divi itself to save you time when you're building sites save that and then we'll go ahead once that's finished and inspect the front end again okay so let's refresh this and boom now you see some awesome spacing everything looks fantastic you're sliding actual blurbs. Now your imagination can start going crazy because you can build some really cool, I don't know, testimonials. You can add different calls to action here. You can do all types of interesting things. And this is really just to serve as some brain food for you to get creative and build some awesome stuff. Now I mentioned some other different layouts that you can do with this plugin. So, or not plugin, but the actual library. So let's go back to the Slick.js site. Okay, back on the Slick.js site, we can click on Demos. Now here we've got Demos, and this one is kind of reminiscent of what we have, and this is just a default setting with the default styles, and it's sliding through single items on the page, and it's got the nice dot layout on the bottom there. This is one similar to what we had on the site, which is three items at a time, but it's also sliding three at a time. Responsive displays. Now, if you switch to a responsive screen, you can drag your finger over. Variable width. You can do adaptive heights, so items with different heights on them. You can go through different data attribute settings. Really, there's a lot of stuff. Center mode. You know, this is for you to go explore and check out and learn more about and figure out what works best for you and what you want to do on the site, but this is supposed to just, you know, give you the idea, give you the fuel. And that's it, really. Um, now, it, it's worth saying, in conclusion here, that you can also add layouts, um, so maybe you can build out an entire row. And let's go to the back end really quick, and I'll illustrate that. So now maybe what you'll do instead, if you want to do a row, we would assign that slide stuff class here to the section here. And what we do, is instead of having all these blurbs in one row, we, we would have a, a row for each layout that we want to slide through. So we'd get rid of all these extra rows and maybe we'll add a button here. Um, you know, click me um, and, the, and different various stuff that you, you know, again, your imagination is the only limitation here. And then you'd go ahead and you create a row for each slide that you want to utilize. And there's really nothing else you need to do. That's how easy it is. So, and with that, guys, that's pretty much it. Definitely show off the designs and things you come up with in the comments in the bottom, link to it. On the actual blog page that I showed you guys earlier, you'll see all the different links that we utilized, and it has a text guide for this tutorial as well. And we should probably also have all the links in the video description if you're coming at, if you find this tutorial through YouTube. 
So thank you so much for your time. I hope this was helpful and definitely excited to see what you guys create. That's it from me, Roby, and the Divi Engine team. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.